I'm with Rich today on his Sunseeker Martinique. Now he gave me a shout because he'd done a refit on his boat, very different to the other Martinique we'd done, and he thought it'd be an interesting one to have a look at, and it really is. So I'll introduce you to Rich. This is Rich. Hi, Rich. Hi, everyone. Hi, Nick. How are you? Very well indeed, thank you. And thank you for inviting me down to your boat. This is excellent. You're welcome, sir. And so tell me about it. What year is it, first of all? So she's in 1990. Yeah. So 30, well, 31 years this year. Wow. But. Uh, yeah, so getting on, but but still still looking good. So yeah, and I think that's what's interesting actually is you know people often say they look at these new boats we film and go yeah, but what are they gonna be like in ten years time? But actually, if you buy a quality boat, which of course being a sun seeker it is, it does mean that that as long as you look after them and maybe do a little bit of sort of titivating as they go through life, yeah, you know, they they just go on and on, don't they? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you have to be careful of what you say because it's you know I think boat building has changed over the years, but I still believe the early the early 90s, 80s, those sort of boats, Fairline, Princess, Sunseeker, were, were really well made, and uh, I think you can, you know, you can do really well in an old boat if they've been well looked after. Definitely, yeah, I absolutely agree. And in fact, I think as well to some degree, I think modern boats, there's kind of, as it's, again, if you're so careful how you phrase it, but there's a lot more engineering goes into the modern boats. Whereas I think back in the 90s, they just made them really, really strong, and and because they didn't have quite the technology yeah. to understand the stresses and strains, so you tend to find that. These 80s and 90s boats are absolutely rock solid, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And I think you famously said something in a video once. Uh, I had a Portofino before this one, and you, right. you were doing a test on one of those, and you said this were when boats were boats and not caravans. You know? <laughs> That's they were, exactly they were right. They built really well. And, yeah. you know, I've, I've always gone for older boats. I have had some more modern boats, but I, 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 I guess I'm a bit of a traditionalist in a way, and, and that may show in all of the refit. You know, I haven't gone... It's sort of got a contemporary and modern twist, but not losing that sort of era, if that makes sense. Understood completely, yeah. So I think what would be great is if you can show us around the boat first of all, yeah. and show us what it's all about, and then maybe we can have a sit down and you can tell us about your boating history and what you do with yeah, this one and that kind of stuff. Okay. So should we start out here in the cockpit? I mean, the one thing I noticed is there's a really great seating area around the back of this, and of course, this predates the transom doors, so you get seating in a complete loop all the way around, which is great. Yeah, I, th I think it's pros and cons, Nick, really, with it, because the seating is, is phenomenal. And you have an inlay that goes in here as a sunbed as well, mm -hmm. but you do have to step up and over the transom. Yes. Um, so my wife and daughters, that you know, they I think they prefer a boat with a transom door, uh -huh. but everyone congregates on this boat because it has, out of all my friends' boats, I've got a friend with a... Uh, a Targa 40, uh, another one with a pilot house. This, this definitely offers the most seating, so we normally end up on here. Well, you can sit, I guess, one, two, three, four, eight people around here? Yeah, quite easily, and then a couple, obviously, at the helm if yes. you want to. And, and you've got an area over here. Um, it's quite clever, actually, because that's to give you the headroom, this this sort of section over here in the, in the aft cabin. Yes. But it, you can use this for seating, um, or, or we made it into sort of a a cooking area um, so we've got a little gas stove that goes on here ah okay that makes um, sense because the boat's all 240 so it has got a generator but if you don't want to run the generator because of noise then it's quite nice just to be able to make a cup of tea or coffee or whatever it may be so we, we can put a gas stove up here and then you've got storage in here as well brilliant if you need to yeah that makes sense and as so, you yeah, say you drop those on and then you've got a bit of extra seating there as well exactly lots lots of seating yeah and then over here at the helm, that all looks fairly original to me. Yeah, very original. In fact, that was something that I liked. A lot of people will look at it and go, wow, that's pretty antiquated. But <laughs> um, I have got some later Raymarine uh, navigation equipment to go on, a new radar, uh, which I will do. But for me, w when I was looking at the boat, I look at the originality and what was on it and what sort of condition it was in. And, you know, it was everything worked. It was really clean. So for me, it was uh, it's a well cared for boat. And, and I like that, I like the traditionalness. But then we've brought the contemporary twist. When we go inside, you'll see what I mean. So the, you see the sort of the gray texture that we've got on the table um, and all the finish. We've, we've brought the, the sort of inside outside, but without ruining that originality. Yeah, that makes sense, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Well, should we have a look inside and you can yeah, show us please. what you've done? Do you want me to go first? Yeah, or? I'll follow you in, that'd be great. Okay. I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> following me in, but. So, the inside is hopefully quite a big transformation. It was, um, that these were originally like a, a beige sort of suede material. Um, oh, I remember, I, it's like a sort of Nova suede. Yeah, that's suede, it. Wasn't yeah, it? Nova suede. Yeah. Know, and it's, 
The only problem with Nova Suede is when they put them, most of the boats were going to the Med. Um, they didn't suffer with our climate, and they get a bit of mildew, mould, black spot, and it was it was just looking a bit tired. Mm. So um, with Desti Marine, and I have to say Neil and the guys have done a fantastic job. We've you know we've done a, a refit on the on the interior. Um, and, and a little bit on the exterior paint work. I, I actually work for a, for a paint company, Axa Noble. So that was great to do, um, working with a customer. So that was your, the Axa Noble products that you put on it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, people would probably better know them for All Grip or International. So we used All Grip uh, on there. Yeah, so when gel coat gets tired, mm -hmm. um, particularly dark colors, it, it was a really quick way of giving it life and luster. So all the blue and the silver, we, we changed the coloring on the boat to give it a more modern twist. But we've gone sort of metallic, blue, silver. It's very subtle, but when the sun hits it, you really see it. Nice. Not, not sure it's gonna do it today. But, <laughs> but um, And then all of these materials, This um, the Gallia was actually remade. It's, it's quite, I don't know how to explain it, Nick, but the, the draw, the draw fronts before were stuck out on the early model, if anyone uh, remembers them. So we put a false front on, made new draw, draw fronts and flush fitted everything. Right. And this is, um, this is a 3M, this is a, an adhesive vinyl, um, which they're really good in for architectural vinyls. Right. Not, not, maybe not so much for gloss, it doesn't quite have the same gloss as paints, but on these architectural and sort of trimming it worked really well so I was really pleased with that mm. so lots lots done really um, new hob um, microwave mattresses so the vinyl on the ceiling for instance is this new up here as well yeah everything everything you can see Nick is has been replaced she was gutted right back to the shell right um, electronics everything was really good uh -huh. um, everything has remained in the same place so the holes for the lights are the same yeah but what we've been able to do is put more modern sort of lighting in there so led so there's a lot less draw on the batteries mm -hmm. they run a lot cooler um so yeah i think put on paul's boat he did a, an amazing amazing job and that's why i rang you because i said you know but I, what we did is we sort of we did a refit that i think most of us average boaters would do on a on a tired boat a little yes. bit of vinyl work a little bit of upholstery absolutely so i just thought it'd be quite interesting for people to see yeah and it uh, is a very very different feel actually i mean obviously yeah. what he was going for was a showcase of what they could do yeah. at yacht solutions and yeah. it was brilliant for that but it is it but it, he did bring the boat bang up today in fact it's even more modern than some current boats oh absolutely uh, it looked amazing but yeah for me i'll be honest the budget wasn't quite there yeah it was just a case of how do we how do we modernize it so the upholstery is, is all squared off and and solar marine mike at solar did, did the upholstery did a lovely job we we kept the the touch to nova suede right because i wanted something in there of of originality yeah that makes sense I, I'm, a, I'm a sun seeker nerd i really am <laughs> uh -huh. so um I, I love i love all of this and then just little little detail bits like the the wood grain behind the bulkhead paneling normally that would just be one big panel yep just wanted to give it a little bit of detail it does look yeah. good actually i think that's a nice touch the way that's been done and just broken up with the with the gray the gray in there looks nice but i'll open that so you can see thank you probably we won't both enter the bedroom together <laughs> Fair enough. Might talk. so again you've taken exactly the same theme through with these finishes on on the sort of the wooden sections as it were yeah absolutely same finish um it was important for my wife she wanted a boat where we could have a separate bedroom where you didn't have to make the bed up all the time yeah um and you know we're, we're, well we are going to talk about sort of past and what i've done but i used to work for sunseeker many years ago so i've always had a love affair with the boats but um you know they're, they're brilliant quality i mean even the job that neil and the guys did inside you know all the wardrobes aligned as well it hasn't it hasn't just finished on the bits that you can see yes it's, it's a complete a complete refit it does feel very fresh as well it doesn't feel like an old boat that's been tarted up. It that's feels that smell, does it? No, it doesn't. No. Do you know what I mean? I, totally. Yeah. That, <laughs> sort of bit. And there's nothing wrong with it, but there yeah. is a when a boat gets to a certain age, it does have that that sort of smell a bit. I'm 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 really proud of it, to be yeah. honest. I absolutely love it. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, fantastic boat. It's a great job. Yeah. And what have we got back here then? We've got the two so, doors here. Yeah, two doors. So to to as you're looking at it to your left, this would be the heads. And, and this is quite interesting actually, because this is untouched. This was so this is the boat would have been 30 years ago. Um and, and how she is now. And again, it's an, a nod to the 
traditionalness. And Gillian Stewart, that used to own it, just uh, they had it from five years old. Wow. And um, they've just maintained her beautifully. So it's, you know, it's a nod to them and how well they looked after it. And yeah. Those are the bits I look at when I go and look at a boat. It's the, you know, how has it been maintained? How have they looked after it? So that's not pleasant for everyone looking at toilets. But that's, uh, <laughs> that's a very necessary now. part. <laughs> so that this is um, the the rear sort of bedroom, if you like. Yep. Sits under the so under the, the helm station. So you've got a, a twin, um, or you can put an infill in and make a double. So it's a decent size when you get down into it, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, it's quite clever because the other side, sort of up against the aft bulkhead, you can sit up in bed and and or just chill out. My, I've got two daughters, one of eighteen, one of twenty-two. Right. You know, if they want to want to get away or um, you know, just sit somewhere quiet, it's quite a nice place to come. Tuck themselves into a corner with a good book, for yeah, example. Yeah, basically. Yeah, because that's what they do. With books. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and there's a bit of storage in here, yeah, I guess. A bit of storage. See, um, you're famous for these cupboard openings. I know. So, uh, I know. I've, I've been everywhere today, cleaning <laughs> bits. And... <laughs> Making sure it's tidy. Yeah. Making sure there's no nasty surprises. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And just for your delight, uh -huh. there's because I know you like a mirror. Uh, a little wave at a mirror. There we go. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So complete. A complete refit, really, I don't know, really proud. I can't say enough of the people that are involved because they've been brilliant. Um, the the Plasti Teak in the cockpit, um, yeah. Mantis Marine, D Dave, he, he was great. He templated it, but I fitted it. Um, right. I'm, I'm very tight as a boater. <laughs> I like to do most of it myself if I can. So he did a fantastic job. You know, people have been really, really helpful. So, yeah, very, very pleased with all of it. Awesome. Uh, can we go look at the engines and talk about engines? Yeah, of course we can. Fantastic. There we are. I'll come around this side and follow you up. So, let's just move a couple of bits out of the way. Yep. She is, she is actually uh, quite interesting. She is quite a heavy boat before we get there because she. I do have um, a generator on board ah, as well. Yep. I've got a diesel heater for the cockpit. Nice. But it also runs 240 um, heating and it's got air conditioning as well as part of the original oh, okay. spec. So it was a so med boat originally? Well, it was It was supposed to be, right. but it actually went to the Channel Islands. Oh, so, okay. um, there's a, funnily enough, when I worked at Sunseeker, I was a warranty engineer and used to look after the Channel Islands. Yeah. So Richard, the dealer, Richard Matlock, uh, had the boat sold it and the people are, that had it before me actually bought it from the Channel Islands okay um, and had it for well I say 20, 25 years that's amazing this is, see, you, he always finds it he always finds the rubbish <laughs> I hid this away and then he wants the engines absolutely so again very much you know traditional AD41 Volvos um, these are the original um, turbocharged. We have, you know, full service. It's had turbos on it in the past. We've replaced the exhaust elbows at the back. Yep. Um, so it's had, you know, general general maintenance. Quite a clever little uh, little design there. We actually re-sleeve the, the, I call them cow horns, but they corrode. I know exactly these. what you mean. Yes, the and exhausts as yeah, they come so out. Yeah, so we've yep. actually uh, turned them down out of aluminium and we've we've made new tops rather than having to pull all the engines out and start again. That makes sense. It was a it was a cost thing really, Nick. But yeah. It, you know, it's a really good a good repair. So dirty bits, dirty bits. They won't show up. Go. Don't worry. <laughs> and what sort of speed do you get with those? Um, on the on the return from the handball, clean bottom, half a tank of fuel. Uh, she ran thirty point one knots. Brilliant. Cruises it. I'd say cruise at about twenty. Yeah. You you don't really. She she's an old girl. I think it's like a classic car. You know, you don't want to beat it to death. No, exactly. It's um, you know, I, I think for me, she'll she'll cruise along happily twenty knots, and that's more than enough for, for anyone really and to be honest with you that's what we all do we all you know i've seen people with 35 knot boats 40 knot boats everyone cruises at 20 because it's a comfortable yeah. speed you're not beating yourself to death you can exactly. look at the scenery yeah um and it's yeah it's what we all do isn't yeah, it yeah it is and it's you know it it's um well I, i'm gonna say it fuel consumption as well <laughs> you know it's, of course. it's one of those that if you um if you do use the boat hard it burns that last I don't know, quarter of the throttle doesn't really do anything other than burn all the fuel up. So, yeah, true yeah. enough. Yeah, so it's, 
So that's it, pretty much warts and all. Um, we've done, what have we done? So new linings on the on the hoop here, new lights. Um, the upholstery is an interesting story. Only been replaced once in its whole life. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this upholstery is about 12 years old. That's amazing. In here. Um, so, again, a credit to, to Stuart and Gillian how they looked after her. But, but the thing that we've done now you've seen the galley is the, the grey to bring the grey outside. Um, we, we put stainless steel cup holders where the, these used to be gel coat. Right. So there's lots of little, little details, which I love. I love the detail. Yeah. It's all about the detail. Um, and it just, yeah, it just makes it a little bit more modern, but not too much. People still stand on her and go, yeah, I remember these. You know, it's not, yeah. not changed massively. Yeah, it's nice. It's a really sympathetic upgrade, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of here to say. We're, we're, we're very pleased, very pleased with her. I could imagine. So let's have a seat and you can tell me about your boating history because that's always interesting. Yeah, where do you want me, sir? Why don't you sit over here? Let's go over here. And then I can sit on this side. There we go. So so where did it all start for you? It's, well, it, I think it started childhood with my dad. Um, we, you, well, we, we're still very lucky that we own a, a beach up down at Studland um, on the coast here. And I used to come down here as a child, water skiing windsurfing, sailing, so very, very lucky with that. And we had a, you know, the first boat was a um, Shakespeare Clubman with a 50 Blue Band Mercury. For I those, remember. For those people out there, so that's an 80s sort of boat. Um, and then into Fletcher's, that was a favorite one. I think my, my dad owned two Fletcher's. I've, I've had uh, three o over the years um, as, as a speed boat. And then when, so then you lose touch with home, right? Because parents, are, they're not cool and you don't want to be with your parents even though they they've given you an amazing opportunity with the beach and then i came back i came back to boats when i was i, I left didn't come as much and then at about 19 i was working as a paint sprayer um in a body shop and someone came in wanting to be sponsored their race boat and they wanted it repainted so i repainted the boat and actually went to watch the race and was bitten by boating bugs so i started racing formula four cats um I don't know, Nick, in the early 90s. I wasn't very good. Uh, right. Club racing, really enjoyed it. Naively thought it would be much cheaper than motorsport because you don't have tyres. Uh -huh. Didn't really think that you needed different props for every race you did. And and these roller race props are really expensive. So, yeah, I did that for a couple of years. And then with Sally, oh, it goes on, Nick. It goes on, sorry. With Sally, we went on the Thames. Um, we had a boat on the Thames for a while. And then we progressed and, I, and I've sort of restored and replaced as I've gone. So I'm now 14 boats, 15 years. Wow. And I've got to this one. So we started for anyone out there that thinks, how do I, how do I do it? Yeah. I started with 1500 pounds Yeah. and I've ended up with this one. So it's just through progressively rolling the boats. My, my, my trade is a, is a sprayer. Um, as I said, I work for Axon Oval or all grip or international. Um, so I'm very lucky that I can um, try all products and, and do testing. So yeah, I've been, been very lucky. But yeah, we started with a, with a um, 15 foot speedboat and yeah, I think 15, 14, 15 years later, we're into this. Brilliant, that's so, fantastic. And uh, I think it's interesting where we are, I mentioned where we are. So we're in Wareham at the moment. Yes. And yeah. we're uh, sort of on a river on a mooring, which is interesting. Uh, I think the first one of these I've done actually on, on a mooring, and I guess that must be a little bit more economical than being in a marina. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just for those, obviously um, Nick wasn't filming then, so it's for anyone watching, Nick's disappointment when he was doing Meet the Owner and he came to a, a, a 2.7 metre dinghy, was, was, uh, his face was a picture. But um, but no, I mean, there is there is a cost. I, I guess I, I'm basing on a budget. I, I don't mind saying that. I, I do all the maintenance myself. Um, this is an environment agency mooring. It's a, it's what they call a trot, as you said. So you, you need a dinghy to get to and from it. But as long as you don't mind slight inconvenience, and we've got sort of an hour out to the chain ferry at um, at Sandbanks there. As long as you don't mind that journey, you can you can do it on a on a budget. You know, I think I, I don't know. I think with insurance and everything, we're um, and a tank of fuel, we're, we're below two thousand pounds a year to to get onto the water really without the without the maintenance nick but, sure so yeah. so the the, the berth here how much is that 
I think they, they're about th these trots are about eight fifty plus the vats. Wow. Um, they they go up in price. We have we're lucky to have a mooring a, a bankside mooring up the river, but they're reworking them at the moment, so they've moved this down here. But um, I have to say, I, I quite like it. Once you're here, it's you know you can. You can just sit here, listen to the rushes and the wind, as everyone can probably hear today. <laughs> it's quite and, breezy today, yeah, isn't it? And watch the traffic go by. So, yeah, very, very, very lucky. Probably would like my bankside mooring back if I could, just for ease. Yes. Um, but, yeah, it's difficult. There's pros and cons, aren't there? Of you know, course. marina, my wife would love a marina environment. Yeah. Um, we enjoy people, we enjoy the socialness. You, you don't quite get that on a trot mooring, obviously, because yeah. you're very much on your own. But we were on holiday last week, and the first thing we did was book three nights at um, uh, the Haven at Pool. So uh, we did right. three nights, and that allows us. It was our first test, actually. It was our first test to um, try the boat with its hookup, shore power, all those sort of things. So it was yeah. quite good to do. But yeah, we we love it. We love it here. Um, very lucky. We live locally as well, which isn't always a good thing. I don't know how you find it with yours, but maybe we don't quite use it as much as we should. I know exactly what you mean, because you've got a very comfortable bed at home, haven't you? Yeah. And you sort of think, well, okay, we're done boating, should we just go home tonight? Yeah. You have to sort of discipline yourself a bit sometimes. Yeah, I look at so many people that come down and they're coming for the weekend or on holiday, and I think, you know, I, I really, I think I've probably slept on here more than my, my wife has, but, yeah. you know, I quite like just the overnight on it. I do home office on it as well. Sorry, work, if anyone's watching. <laughs> but um, I do have internet and bits, so it's, uh, it's quite a nice place to be. Absolutely. And what, where have you been with the boat? What's the furthest you've been with it? Um, well, I brought it back from <laughs> from Hamble, so that's been it, really. We've okay. only she went back in the water in March after the refit, right? Um, and due to COVID, yeah, all these sort of things, um, we haven't had as much use as we might like. But we'd like to come down to your neck of the woods, really. That yes. would be our our next bit. Um, probably the coast. We've always sort of come out of out of pool and turn left. Right. Yep. And we we want to go go right and do the real Jurassic coastline. So, you know, Lulworth, Durdledore, um, all the way round Weymouth, and and come down to your sort of area. But, you know, I'm I'm living my dream through your boating. So thanks to you, I can I can see what it's like without spending the fuel. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Totally. Fair enough. But it would be a good boat for doing that trip for sure. It would be a, um, you know, it's a big capable boat. I've done that journey across Lime Bay in a Fabantago 33, some of the size and yeah. the boat, and it's ideal for that. You feel very comfortable on, on, on that sort of thing. It would be great. I'm glad you said that unprompted without asking my wife, because I, mean, I think we're, we're what we call coastal boaters. Yes. We've still got some sort of small boat mentality, and I don't mean that rudely. For anyone um, that, that does trailable boats, you put them in, you go for a blast, you come back. Yeah. And we've still got that mentality. We still look for that sunny, sunny day. We still want the perfect water but what we're beginning to realize with the canvases the heater and and how this is now set up we can probably go away in most weather not not nothing dangerous no. but to actually enjoy it a little bit more so last week was a good test for that for us yeah it was um it went very well brilliant brilliant Still and i think married. that's the thing you yeah <laughs> that's a good start i think that's the thing is you just got to gently expand your horizons rather than going mad and then scaring the life out of yourself and then thinking i'm never doing that again yeah. you just want to build up to it really yeah exactly you? exactly it's, it's a gentle i mean we do uh, one of the places we like to go is um is over to yarmouth uh that's something that we do it's maybe once maybe twice a year um yeah. i had a, a portofino 31 before this one and we enjoyed the journey it was just my wife always wanted a, a a boat with a bedroom which is why we went to this one yeah uh, the portofino we we restored in uh i can't remember what year it was but that was in robert braithwaite's memory i was very lucky to have worked with robert um, right and and knew robert quite well so we i did it in memory of robert and uh it's uh, if anyone wants to see it it's on the all grip website there's a, a a little piece on it um but that was really nice to do and it's it's one of those things that I've just found a brand that I really like. Yeah, I, and I can understand that. And actually, I'll tell you what's interesting is, that, you know, there's a lot of people doing uh, restorations and modifications and all that on older boats. It's really a thing now. And you think of people like like Richard is doing that uh, project that I'm following, yeah. and Paul, and, and quite a few others. But what's fascinating is I would say 90% of them are Sunseekers. Yeah. The 80s and 90s Sunseekers, everybody's restoring them and bringing them back. And I think there's a real 
love for those boats. Yeah. I even said to Sunseeker once, I said, listen, you guys need to look at this and realize, you know, maybe there's a future in, like Fiat brought, brought the 500 back. Yeah, exactly. You know, Sunseeker, I think if they brought a modern version of this, I think people would absolutely love it. Well, back, back in the day when I was working there, we did, we did rebuild a, an 18 foot, one of the original, one of the original boats that we put on the, um, the boat show stand. I remember um, Robert. It. Actually, Robert did a cameo in one of the the Bond films. It actually, was. It was in, in Quantum of Solace. Yeah. Yeah. So in the, the in the Sovereign. Yeah. But we not many people know, but we built another one, but did, did later mouldings, but kept the that, and it it was, you know, it was in the minds of thinking it'd be really cool to have that as a tender in in maybe a you know in a forty meter or something. But yes. I don't I don't know what happened. Um, wasn't my part of the business at the time, but it didn't happen. But you know, speaking to Sean now, you know, they're very into the old boats and it's, they've been really, really helpful with, with materials. Um, you know, I've got uh, lots of companies that have helped me, uh, uh, an ex friend and colleague Smurf. Um, he's very good at locating parts and, and bits. So what's really interesting, Nick, is that it's still out there. You can still get the bits. That is interesting. And, and most of the companies were local. Yeah. That was the interesting thing for me. They are, pool based company so if I want a bit of stainless steel repairing or doing you can pretty much find someone that originally has got the drawings or the plans of when these were when these were built brilliant and so the last question then what's the future now and you mentioned going through sort of 15 boats in 15 years so is this going to go for something else you're going to hang on to this one what are you going to do with it well it depends if you put this on film and my wife watches it or not really <laughs> um, so if Sally if you're watching this is it <laughs> <laughs> um, in answer to your question, Nick, it just depends. I mean, I'm I'm a long way from my next boat in the respect of a, the brand of Sunseeker um, and and value and and everything. There's it's a big it's a big jump. Um, so I think we'll stay for this one for a while. Maybe have some other project boats on the go um, while we're enjoying this one and just see. I think we need to learn this and see what we want. If we do want that transom door. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm very happy. I'm, I'm governed. My wife's very clever because we're governed by size right. on these moorings. Right. So 38 foot is the biggest you're allowed. Sunseeker and Infinite Wisdom are always bigger than they they ad actually advertise. So this is a Martinique 36, but they're just shy of 38 foot. Yeah. So she knows I can't go any bigger. <laughs> so she's been very clever. Excellent. So I think this is it for a while, but, you know... Uh, I'll I'll look look to the future, see what comes what comes up really. Never say never. Never say never. Absolutely. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. That's been absolutely brilliant. It's a fascinating boat. Um, let me know what you think of Richard's boat in the comments. I think it's brilliant. And I'm going to finish off with a little look at this. It's Wareham River, isn't it? I guess. It is. Yeah, the River Frome. It's the called. River Frome. Let me show you the River Frome because it is absolutely beautiful. But thank you so much, Richard. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks, Nick. And uh, yeah, here is the River Frome. We'll catch you on another one of these very soon.